Hello everyone, this is John for PokerVIP.com and welcome to part 2 of 4 of the Crushing 25 and L series over on Unibet. Part 1, well, it didn't go to plan. We got butchered, we lost a buy-in, but um, ran Kings into a full house, ran Ace King into uh, Kings in a blind versus button war. Nothing too crazy, a couple of pots where people were making random raises where we just played passively versus them. But all in all, I think we learned some things. I think we saw how the games work, and we're just going to go ahead and continue on in, like I say, part two or four of this 25 and L series. If you're, if this is the first uh, video of the series you're seeing, you can also go check out the micro stake series, <coughs> which covers four and L and ten and L. And then after this, there is a four part 50 and L series coming. So lots of Unibet content ready for you. As always, please leave any comments or any reviews. And we will just talk about the hands. People are going on top left at the moment. Sam Spar bets 425 into 1691 on a pretty wet board. So a very small bet. Ripping a very strong hand or trying to maybe get a cheap turn rather than check calling 12 or check jamming. He's maybe just leading with like ace x of spades or like 9 10 of spades or something like that. He's been jammed on anyway, getting a very good price over 3 to 1. So yeah, 9 10 of spades, that makes sense. He hits and he wins. Haven't been haven't seen any of these games. That was just a pretty good uh, good guess, good read, whatever you want to call it there, on what he could have. Just from my experience of seeing these hands over the years. Okay, so this is awesome. This Wok Alista guy, open jamming blind versus blind for a lot of big blinds. Um you know, obviously just gotta think that's a weak player, and we like weak players. Lots of fold so far. Oh, oh top up doesn't work, so we have to manually top up. Constantly. That's okay. And like I say, um, as long as you know this and you know, when you start seeing someone who's sat with 14, 54, 12, 79, 11, 70, like on this, uh, top right table, you can start saying, well, if all regs are topping up, then what are these guys? Well, they're probably not regs. They're probably not great players. They're probably just recreationals playing with whatever they've got in their account. And, um, you know, we, we instantly put a mark on their head. You know, that's, that's the cool game of poker. We chase the weak players, and that's one way to identify them. I'm not actually too... Oh, yeah, I opened with the eights, and I'm just going to go ahead and, you know, see about this board, because I do have a lot of ace-queens and sets there, and he doesn't. He does go ahead and raise me, though. Um, he should have a zero hands that he would raise me with on this board. Even King-10 should be a flat call. Um, two pair, certainly a flat call. Set, certainly a flat call. So well, that's pretty confusing, but obviously we're just going to have to fold with pocket eights. But maybe just think, well, this mini thinker guy isn't um, that great. HX2, we're going to fold here. And King-8, we're going to fold as well. Queen's top right, we isolated a limper. We get an interesting flop. I mean, we can play this like... One of two ways. We can bet, call it off, or we can just check and then call down. I like to personally check because I think we induced a lot of bluffs, and we can basically just call turns and rivers. Once you check, so we're just going to go ahead and bet for value, and I'd assume I've always got the best hand at this point. Because we think he'd lead with his kings, his sets, his two pairs, and so on. Three's on the button, we open, ace, deuce, off, and the gun, we fold. <clears throat> so yeah, like I say, the last video, whew, we ran into some spots, and we... Uh, we ran into some hands. 3C, I'm just going to see bet. You know, we're never going to win at showdown, like, really, with his hand. Um, so betting's fine. You know, if he just falls two overs, that's great. We can also make him fold hands like fours, fives, sixes, sevens. So that's a nice win as well. King Jack, I'm just going to opt to call. Uh, threes, we're just going to check give up. <coughs> King Jack, I guess I just check. Threes. We might win um, versus Ace 10 or like Ace X of Spades, but I don't feel too hopeful. King Jack, I'm going to fold to his delay C bet. Wow, huge open size here. Huge open size. Um, it's pretty close between folding. Uh, the reason I want to fold is because I've got such a playable hand in position. Um, the only problem with calling is it's a lot of big blinds and people can raise and squeeze behind us. Um, so we could definitely just err on the side of caution and fold. I'm just a sucker for playing in position with a hand that makes a roll flush. It does get squeezed and it gets a, a call. 
we're getting a pretty good price so we're going to call here and we can definitely get into some trouble that's for sure and it does borderline on spew at this point but you know, when you're getting about four to one with a hand like this in position versus what we assume are two weak players um, you know, bear in mind that's very different to playing versus two regs. We assume these two guys are very bad players. Um, then, you know, it's okay. He bets and gets a flat, um, leaving himself two behind. Assume he's going to get called. And we actually aces and queens, so that's pretty crazy. Queen should have just got the all in pre, obviously, versus this guy's stack size and protection and all that good stuff. Um, so we actually ran into two monsters there, which I was actually quite surprised at. I was expecting to see, like, sevens and, like, ace ten <laughs> or something like that. But this time they wake up with uh, monsters. And our 10 jack suit, like I say, it can definitely border on spew. So do be careful in those spots, but in position, suit connectors like that, getting a good price, it's okay to go ahead and call. Need to be careful post swap, of course, if we hit like top pair. Um, need to just basically watch how we go. But if we hit draws, obviously we can flop straights, flushes, and all that good stuff. Going to 3-bet ace-queen suited here, four-handed in position, a bit of a monster. Um, Ace-jack, I'm going to defend versus the undergun open. Ace-queen, top pair, queen kicker. Um, I'd assume I've got the best hand quite a lot of the time here. We block ace-king, we block aces, I doubt you called calls deuces or fours or ace deuce or ace four. So we're just going to bet. We also have that backdoor flush draw. Ace-jack, I float this paired board. And we get raised here, really weird. He's wrapping Ace King or better. I'm not too sure I can believe him. So I think it's going to be a spot where I just call and then never fold. Hopefully we see a spade or something. We do see a spade. Um, obviously the five gets there. Get a better Ace Jack here. See if we can get him to fold out a chop. Get jammed on. We call. He's got Ace King. Wow. And we miss. That is weird. Um, like that he just jams on that straight board and everything. Very confusing stuff, but it is definitely the correct play. Uh, basically, people do overplay. People do play poorly. But, you know, he call calls a three bet. So, ace king, and that's pretty much it. And then when he jams that turn, you're thinking, would you do that with ace king? It's a bit random. Uh, he does, and, you know, it works. He got the, he, I mean, he got a stack. So, got to respect that. King deck, I um, three bet from the small bind versus cut off open. Good spot, good spot to basically steal. I'm going to go ahead and just see about this flop. Sizing, I think, was good. Three forty eight into four ninety nine. Obviously, that turn completes the straight, but we're not too sure how many fives he check raises with, like which fives he can have in his range. Um, and obviously, it's a spade, so we just go with it. King Jack, I'm shutting down. Quite often we'll um, connect with this board. Spade on the river. Don't think we can uh, rep it well, so I'm just going to check and give up. King, queen, I open. I always check back these second pair type hands with the intention to induce buffs from him. He pots it here, but we do block jack, queen. Um, do we think he just did this with one pair? We're not sure, so we just go ahead and call. King, jack, like I say, we fold. River's a very easy check back, and he has two pair. So this is, uh, this is a fun ride. Eight minutes in. We're enjoying ourselves here. We've lost every single pot we've played. Um, but like I've said in many videos, I will never delete a video where things go wrong or where I even make mistakes. I think that's how we learn. I think that's the most honest way of doing it. We can all show videos where we run good, we play great, and we get nothing wrong, but it's very hard to learn from stuff like that. So... I'll discuss what I think I do wrong. You guys can discuss other things. And that's how we'll learn together. And I hope that's cool with you guys. But hey, we've still got 20 minutes of the video. Two more parts to make after it. So I feel a um, feel a run it up coming on. Crush for the next two and a half parts. King six, we fold. Ace five suit, we're going to open in the cutoff. Jack six, we fold. Mm -hmm. 
Queen three suit are going to fold here. Um, I would I have isolated if he was um, just a limper, but he has min raise, remember? This guy opens again. A very large out of position with Jack Queen, we're going to fold. Just very strange opening sizing. Again, got to just assume Samsa is a really weak player for doing that. Because it's not good, you know, basically. There's no positive to it. A couple of interesting pots going on the bottom tables. Always keeping an eye out. We can't note these people, but we can definitely uh, mentally know these uh, these things that are going on. Going to fold and fold and fold. Pretty easy. <clears throat> Lots of folds these last few minutes, but that will happen from time to time. And lots of people ask me about tilt. Um, obviously, when we're playing and you know things just go against us like that, you know I've literally sat down and turned this video on. So that was like the first five six minutes of play. You know, losing a stack or two, um, getting in some tough spots, confusing spots. You know, making a big call, it not being correct, whatever. Um, how do we basically stop that from hurting us? Well, the main thing is just experience. You know, we know these things can happen. Uh, the second thing is if we have a good bankroll size, and that's why people say, you know, try and have like 30, 40 bankrolls. 30, 40 binds is a bankroll. Sam said just donkey money off there, sorry. Uh, so we're comfortable. You know, if we lose a couple, it literally means nothing to us. Um, and just always trying to remember like how long term poker is. You know, poker really is a lifelong game. Um, if, you know, like lots of people like see their daily graph and it looks really bad. And I say to them, why don't you look at your yearly graph or your lifetime graph? It is literally a tiny blip. Um, so you just keep thinking forward and keep thinking, like looking at the bigger picture. <laughs> it's hard sometimes, um, but, you know, that's the bet. That's the way I've always sort of like done it. Always just thinking super long term. And knowing that the next day, the next hand, the next game, the next day, the next week, whatever, and will be better. Not nice when it happens on video though. It does hurt the ego a little bit. That ace queen suited hand should get some comments below. It's kind of like, well, we kind of want to fold because you know we don't really love our hand, but then we have ace queen. He didn't re-raise pre-flop, and you know lots of uh, this didn't make enough sense did it. Very raggy hands. <laughs> Nothing we can even really steal with or play with. So I'm just going to keep falling and I'll just keep talking. Do four, we're going to fold. Ten four, we're going to fold. Pretty straightforward, easy stuff. And again, we're just folding, 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 guys. I've never had a drought like this, especially in a video. Pretty funny. So I watched a video today. Oh yeah, was it good? No, he just folded for like 30 minutes. I do apologize. But that is one of those things that will also happen in games. You know, sometimes we are just card dead and people then, you know, ask, well, how do you react? How do you stay focused? Well, the truth is you just keep watching the game. Sometimes there will be down points. Just keep looking for good spots. And just keep trying to play your best. And also, don't take your eye off the game. You know, keep watching. Because, you know, we want to see what these guys are doing. Didn't defend there with Deuces versus the gun open. Ace Jackie, I'm just going to defend my button and flat call. You know, good flop, top pair. Jack kicker. Nut flush draw. This is going to be a pretty easy call. Turn doesn't really change much. Shouldn't change his hand that much either. He checks. I'm just going to go ahead and bet for value and protection. 210 looks good. People very rarely check raise. It's not just a check or a check fold. King on the river. I think we have that many kings. Um, we can definitely have ace queen sometimes, but I think he probably just bet that. So I think his hand is probably like just a worse ace than mine, or maybe the same ace. So I'm just going to go and try and get some river value out of those hands, like ace 10. 
He has ace jack, yeah. Ace queen basically we always feel barrels. We don't feel like he check calls a turn with a king. So it kind of leaves ace jack or worse. So I don't like missing value. And I think that's one of the important things in these games is never missing a penny or a cent, whatever you want to call it. Just always try and get that maximum. Even if it's just an extra big blind, you know, that does add up in the long in the long run. If you win one extra big blind every hand you play on the river, then you can really think about how much that adds up to. I mean, it's absolutely insane. Couple of folds here. Minray is under the gun top right, and we've got 10 jack in the big blind. Probably finds a peel with. 140 on the button now from this guy. <laughs> 10 jack we do peel. I mean, it's pretty close, but um, versus the minrays, I think it's fine. Top a straight draw with bottom pair. He pots it. Pretty interesting sizing. Not something a normal good player would ever do. Um, turn pretty bad for us. This will now just be a check fold, but of course we've got a call with our pair and straight draw. Um, on the flop, but on the turn, it just becomes a fold. Yeah, this pot betting thing is quite uh, ripe on Unibet. I've seen that happening quite a lot now. Open deuces, flop a set. Going to go for a little half pot C bet. The good thing with a half pot is it works so well with value, so well with um, bluffs. And it also just looks pretty lazy. Going to up my bet sizing slightly on the turn. It's a bad turn card for us, you see, so I don't want to go too big, but um, I want to start getting more money into the pot. But sadly, he uh, check folds. Ace queen, blind versus blind, we open. Uh, do three, four flop. I prefer to just check call with my two overs and a gut shot. Basically, just let him bet all of his garbage, and you know, we can basically just turn a straight or a pair. Check. If he bets the turn, I will just fold. More believable now, especially once I've check called. He's very ready in a double barrel bluff. So into the muck it goes. Ace King Min Rays. And we always just stick to that same sizing. Three X all positions, button min rays. We very rarely need to change that. Only really special circumstances when I think about changing my opening sizing. Jack's in the cutoff. We start with an open. Both uh, blinds are pretty short. King Jack, we get squeezed. Not a hand we want to call with, nor do we want to fall bet. So pocket, okay, up here top right first, we're going to isolate with the 4x. And pocket jacks, we get a pretty bad flop when we face a pot size bet. I'm actually just going to fold here. It's very passive, but he bet it into two people. He doesn't have much back. And um, once we call, he's going to only have twice the size of the pot back. So we're just going to get in some tough spots there. So I think that's a good spot to fold. He's going to have us beat a lot. Um, I don't expect to have that many bluffs there, if any at all. So I've got to let that one just go. Ace nine suited, I just like to call. We have position, we have a big suited ace. Everything is pretty nice for us there. Ace five here, I'm gonna check fold. Um, ace nine, we're just gonna bet. It seems like a good place to start. Um, four five off here, we are getting a pretty big price. Four five suited would certainly be a call. Four five off is pretty close. I think we can opt the call though, given the price we have and the fact it's a connecting hand. We somehow back into um, a straight here, so I'm just going to bet close to pot and just hope he calls me with something. Nope, he folds. Figure he calls like 176 as often as he calls like 120. I'm not too sure what worth after the action that's happened, flop and turn, but um, I think that's okay to do. Going to bet my two overs and a gut shot. Not going to be doing anything with my 4-5 off that we somehow ended up in a pot with. <clears throat> we fold. Fold that gut shot. 
no reason to go crazy or anything there. Queen and off will always be a button open for me. It's the stopping point for my Queen X offsuits. Um, Queen 8 off I would not open unless very tight blinds, but Queen 8 suited I would. Uh, King 10, not going to defend. 3 7 suited, not going to defend. And King 4 and Queen 8 will also be folds here. <clears throat> Um, so just traffic wise at the moment, if anyone's wondering, I'm playing at 8 o'clock on a Wednesday evening. 441 players in the 4NL player pool. Uh, 225 players in the 10NL. 134 players in 25NL. And then it goes up to 47 people in the 50NL. 74 people in the 100NL, which is pretty busy. And 51 people in the 200NL. And currently nobody sat at 400. Um, so wow, yeah, lots of games running, lots and lots of games running indeed. Don't know too much about this Des Diaz Array guy, but um, in position with an ace, five-handed. Um, I think we can make a good case for a three bet here. Definitely never want to flat with this hand. But just using that ace as a blocker and you know five-handed position. Those reasons are enough. Ah, oh, good. Queens we get. So if we get any action. None at all. I've never played this long with uh and still remaining on pretty much four starting stack sizes. We have taken a pounding in part two of the twenty five and L crushing Unibet series. Maybe we should name this one getting crushed by Unibet series. But I like it. This makes it way way more worthwhile for me to do than if I just ran good. And show off. Ace Queen Two to open. We're just going to go ahead and see about this flop. It's one that we should win a lot with just like a half pot C bet. Very dry flop, you know. Should never, never get raised on this flop, that's for sure. Um, but we have seen weirder. This Samsung, um, might be a type of guy to bluff. So it might have been like a, a C bet call. Turn, we're just going to check. Hopefully hit a 10. We hit a Queen. Um, it's one of those things, well, does he have a king or a three? Maybe. Does he just show up with a ton of bluffs? Maybe. So I think it would be a call if he bet, but once he checks, I'm just going to uh, check back. I, I don't see what I can get to call me. I don't think pocket eights call me. I don't think fours call me. I don't think ace high calls me or anything. So there's actually nothing I can get called by that. We beat there. So I'm uh, happy to check that one. Six days we fold. A three two can go for a three bet here. Same thing, just you know, suited in position. Don't want to flat with it. So he's folding our three bet, so we can definitely add it into a three bet range. I'm going to go ahead and see about a straight draw here. Be much better if one of these uh, these cards were a spade. Sadly not though. He check calls pretty quick, so I'm gonna put him on pocket pairs like sevens, nines, something like that. So gonna barrel this turn. Queen's well within our range. King queens, jack queens, ace queens, and of course all the other pairs that we previously had. And then we get check min rates. <laughs> so we have to fold. This is not normal behaviour, but we just deal with it. We move on. I'd imagine he had a set there or Queen X of Clubs. I don't think it's ever a bluff. So that leaves pretty much some huge queen or, um, or a flop set. But you saw my sizing was pretty low. We risk um, very little to win, you know, a lot. And also we can jam the river there. If he fight that river and the river break, it would just be a very easy jam for me. Because we just assume he's got like a mid pair and he will not call a three bet and then a bet bet jam. I think this has been the worst performed video of all time. I don't think I've played poorly, but um, it's definitely the worst in, you know, if, if we look at pots lost. I mean, it's been absolutely insane.
But because I'm a sucker, I'll be back for part three and four. Like I say, the 50 NL series, and then we might do some 100 NL if I decide to deposit and grind on here again. My main grind at the moment is Sky. Everyone knows I love Sky Poker. Unibet was it for a while. I haven't played it for a bit. Games went a little bit off during the summer. Not much action, and I just never came back on. But now, I feel it's maybe time. You know, this this run bad doesn't deter me of playing any high games. I don't believe in like running bad on softwares or anything. Um, as you know, any normal person shouldn't. Sometimes things just don't go your way. And I know I've mentioned that quite a lot in this video, but I do feel a lot of people in the forum, you know, often speak about ah this terrible run. My I lost my four biggest pots in one session. I never won a hand. This just proves it happens to everyone. Aces versus threes there. So yeah, Samson's just a massive punter. <laughs> like the biggest punter you've ever seen, which is when I said in that King three three. If um, if I bet any raise, I think it would have been a pretty easy call. Shame he didn't raise here. Yeah. I would have just got my eights in versus him, and assumed I have like him absolutely crushed. More times than we're like flipping R and B. Eight five suit. We're gonna milk seven nine suit. We're gonna try opening mid position. Maybe a mistake because of Samsa. I mean, his stack size. Maybe a big mistake. No, he folds. Okay, good. Maybe got away with uh, got away with that. He has been pretty tight pre flop. It's just post flop. He's been bombing it off. But you know, when you make it seventy five and a guy's only got three left, you kind of uh, you're not doing yourselves any favors there. So I think that probably should be a fold due to that reason. But I think if you had like. 25 bigs or more, then we could open it. King Jack Suit versus Leon, who's the guy who just checked me and raised us. Short stack over here, full stack here, not too sure what type of player he is. Um, Jack Queen Suit we call here. I think King Jack Suit would just check versus two and just try and improve on the turn. You know, 10, Queen, Spade, something like that. But we brick and we fold. Jack Queen suited, not exactly an ideal spot, but certainly one we have to call at least once. Turn straight gets there. Um, if he bet, I would have folded. Once he checks, I don't think I need to turn mine into a bluff. I don't think I'm getting value here, so I'm just going to check and hope he just checks down and I win. I make top two now. Don't expect him to have a 10 that often. Don't expect him to ever have a flush. He might have a set. Um, not too sure what exactly calls me. But I'm going to make it very small and just try and entice him in. That's how the e folds. I feel like he's just got like one pair. Um, so we could just check there because we don't think worse calls. But it's pretty blatant. He doesn't have a flush or a straight. So we're going to really lose to sets because we've got the top two. And probably sets. He might lead that river with. Or at least take a little bit more time to think about doing something. Eight nine suit against two people on this board. I'm just going to check give up. Ahem. <clears throat> Queen seven suit we fold. Ace ten here will be a defend. And this flop will be a check call. He's just gonna uh he's gonna bet that flop pretty wide. He checks, which is pretty interesting. I guess I check call turn and if he double barrels on I'll, I'll just fold river. But I'm not too sure what his you know flop check is and turn bet means. So I think A size is gonna be good a decent amount of time there. And it is, we get a bet out of Jack for suited. So that was the video from hell. Everything went wrong. I was made a fool of. Um, but I will do my usual and leave that to you guys to make up your minds and comment on and learn from. 
And I hope it helps. I, I really do hope it helps that you see just how bad a session can go. Um, but I also hope you still see the value. You know, you see like how bad the plays were that some people were coming out with and how much money there is to be made. So come back for part three and four and obviously 50 NL to follow. And good luck at the table. This is John for PokerVIP.com.